While the 1994 doctor strike still holds the record as the longest protracted industrial dispute having lasted 105 days, the current doctor strike that clocked its 67th day today may dubiously break that record if the current stalemate is anything to go by. Despite the threat of a jail term, the doctor's union officials have dug in on the demand for the implementation of 2013 CBA, a document that Health Cabinet Secretary Cleo Pamailu maintains is legally defective. So a CBA which has not been given, the go-ahead by SRC, which does not incorporate county governments, which are employers, then the court, in its own wisdom, gave a framework for negotiations to be able to bring these bodies on board. And that is uh, one of the aspects which makes the document not be registered in court. Appendix A highlights the new job group and salary increments that the union is demanding nothing less of and hence rejected counter offers by the government. Speaking to Channel One, Mailu says that the union was misled at the time by negotiating a CBA while excluding vital key players like the county bosses and the salary and remuneration commission. The salaries and remuneration, the so-called Appendix A in that document. That Appendix A was suspended its implementation in the same document and therefore it could only be implemented if SRC gave its input to align it with the salary structure of public servants. The figures quoted there between two parties, it was signed. But the two parties at the same time recognized that that particular aspect, salaries and remuneration cannot be implemented until such a time that SRC gives its input. And that has been the difficulty. It is a consensus proposal was arrived at after both teams researched and agreed on the, on the figures. I think the conten main contention there is the fact that the figures were placed in the current grading structure of L, M, N, P, you understand? And so that's also one of the bone of, bon of contention. Mailu further asserts that the CBA, which was not registered in 2013, a year when devolution took root in the country. The governments were in place. Devolution of health services had effectively taken place in February of that year, before four months before the signing of this recognition agreement. It was a mistake, in my view, not to involve the county governments in the signing of this document. But the Kenya Medical Practitioners and Pharmacists and Dentists Union, Deputy Secretary General Hamesi Mochonda, argues that the court determined that there were no gaps in the Ministry of Health, which was equally acting on behalf of the now county bosses. The judge went through it and made a judgment, and she upheld that uh, that was not a reason enough to invalidate the CBA. Mochonda accused the government of insincerity and protecting private investors in hospitals and insurance sector who would have been dealt a heavy blow if the 2013 CBA is implemented. There is also an effort to protect uh, the private sector. And you've had it being said even by the CS Treasury that uh, if they pay doctors an increment more than what they've given, their fear is that doctors will move from the private sector into the public sector. But then the question that is, we all need to ask ourselves as Kenyans, who should be the priority? Is it the public or the private sector? In a neutral light, lawyer George Keithy, however, says such anomalies can be exploited by the Ministry of Health to quash the CBA with the doctors having signed it when devolution was already in place. It looks like although then they thought they're entering into a deal, they're not, they were not careful enough to go to detail and uh, particulars everything um, so, so that then it becomes a forcible letter and that's the problem with uh, CBAs. A CBA is basically a contract like any other contract that's, that can be enforced before court. If it is riddled with certain illegalities or some aspects that otherwise are supposed to be looked at and met in law and conformed to but they don't then they can be questioned and therefore become unenforceable. Keithy also says the union should be tactful in knowing when to budge or what strategies to employ to swing things their way rather than playing to the rhythm of the ministry. The doctors need not be in a hurry. 
they need to consolidate their gains so far and relook at the environment in which they are operating. So that then um, they, they, they need to know when to attack, when to retreat, and when to uh, reconvene to, for further negotiations. But the way they are doing it, I think they are playing into the hands of the government's dominance. The legal quagmire over the CBA aside, both parties concur that Kenyans are suffering and it's time the impasse is resolved. With the union expected to appear before courts on Monday for direction, they hope that even when they find the middle ground, the negotiation will not negatively impact doctors to have the last row. Linus Moshigari for Channel One News.